would be SummerSlam 2011 pay-per-view review. The pay-per-view just went off there a little, a little while ago. And I actually got to say, it turned out to be actually a pretty good show from WWE. Now, it was an excellent show. I wouldn't say that. Um, the second half of the show I thought was great. Um, you saw two really good title matches. Um, the booking to the CM Punk and John Cena match, I thought the in-ring action was actually going on to be somewhat you know, e equal to maybe even a little better than their Money in the Bank match. But the ending and the post-match stuff kind of ruined it. Not Alberto Del Rio cashing in the Money in the Bank. That didn't ruin it. Just the out-of-nowhere, just random Kevin Nash coming out there power bombing him and then obviously you know with CM Punk um, hitting to go to sleep to John Cena and Cena still ha had his foot on the ropes so it's really didn't it didn't resolve this issue with the undisputed championship because they can go in many w ways with this you know C uh, Cena, Cena, Cena can come out there saying he had his foot on the ropes that he never really got uh, defeated in that match then Alberto Del Rio's champ uh, champion right now. And then CM Punk can obviously say, you know, he got screwed out. And I don't know what they can do with this whole, you know, Kevin Nash getting involved. That was pretty random. Maybe they can play it in a way where it comes off not as bad as what it did on this pay-per-view. Maybe they can have, you know, Triple H uh, made Kevin Nash do that or Stephanie did it, which was pretty much the thing that really shocked me with the main event was they had Stephanie in a, a number of backstage segments and Stephanie be never became a part of the match, which... I think most people were expecting, or, you know, Triple H to, you know, uh, call C uh, uh, CM Punk the match, which didn't happen either. Uh, it was pretty much a random way they ended the match with the, you know, foot on the rope, then Nash coming out there. That was really the only thing that hurt that match. If, if they didn't do that and it would have had a clean clean finish to it, and even if they would have still done a Berta Del Rio's part, I wouldn't have minded that part. It's just the way the end of that match kind of hurt it, in my opinion. But it was a very good title match. But the undercard on this was, wasn't was much of anything. Um, the build-up going into this pay-per-view was far from spectacular. I mean, they did a great job of building up the two title matches, I thought, especially you know John Cena and CM Punk's title match. Obviously, this was... Pretty much in WWE's ways, they were building this around just one match, and that was pretty much what they wanted fans to be interested in. Obviously, the selling point of this pay-per-view was the John Cena versus CM Punk match. But for WWE, you know, this is their second biggest show of the year. They should have, you know, made the whole entire show good, not just, you know, the one or two title matches. And then you ended up having a pretty good, you know, last-minute match on here. They got added just after SmackDown, the Wade Barrett and Daniel Bryan match. So you saw three good matches on here. The first half of the show was not good at all, I would say. It was pretty much lackluster, but the second half of the show really picked the show up and really made the show into something good, I thought. Uh, the first matchup was um, a six-person tag. This was a match just got added the last minute. Uh, this was The Miz, um, R-Truth, and Alberto Del Rio versus Kofi Kingston, John Morrison, and Rey Mysterio. I thought it was a pretty decent opener. Um, the crowd was pretty much into it. Um, Mysterio did some good stuff. You saw some uh, good teamwork from uh, Kofi Kingston and John Morrison. Kofi looked very good in this match. He was probably the um, the best part of this match was what Kofi Kingston did. He looked really good in this match. Um, R-Truth got in there, did some stuff. So pretty much everyone got into all the stuff they needed to in this match. And pretty decent opener. And Rey Mysterio um, wins this match for his team. And pens are truth and about a two and a half star match, pretty decent opener um, for a match just got added add at the last minute. It was pretty decent, and the crowd was into it. I would say, especially for the opener. Uh, the next matchup was uh, Mark Henry versus Sheamus. Um, this was actually the build up to this match. I gotta say, actually wasn't bad. I actually thought you know for a Mark Henry match and versus Sheamus, you know, match that I don't think anyone really had interest in. They actually made you seem made you a little interested in it because they actually did build the, build it up pretty well. You know, Mark Henry's been running roughshod on everyone. Sheamus has been going through everyone. So it makes sense having these two, you know, go against each other, pretty much the unstoppable forces at this moment, you know, taking on each other. So that made sense. Now, um, actually, it was going on not to be actually a god-awful match. I think the ending of it with the, um, the count-out victory kind of hurt it a little bit. Towards the end of the match, Mark Henry... You know, picked up um, Sheamus, ran him into the turnbuckle post, then ran him into the guardrail. Shame, um, then then Mark Henry got back in the ring. 
and won the match via count out. About a one and a half star match at best, I would say. Um, it didn't. It it, it, pro it was going on not to be as bad as what I was expecting, but the count out victory did kind of hurt it. I would say. Then the next matchup was the Divas Championship match. This was um, actually before this Divas Championship match was a really terrible part of this pay per view. Which um, for this pay per view they had you know CeeLo Green song, you know Bright Lights uh, as the SummerSlam theme song. He performed on here, and that was just a atrocious part of the show. Probably one of the worst parts of the show was his performance out here. Um, you probably can put that in the category of, you know, when Kid Rock was at WrestleMania and that that terrible performance he did just wasn't good at all, and it, it was a waste of time. I think he was out there for at least close to 10 minutes, and, you know, they could have done something better there. They could have had an extra match on this pay-per-view instead of wasting that time with CeeLo Green. Um, obviously, with him probably being out there, it probably will get them a little media attention so that's obviously probably why WWE did it, but still they they could have done something better there and put another match there, or given time more time to another match. That, that's something they could have done instead of having that right there. So then after that, it was the um, Divas Championship match with Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix. Now this match I was really only looking forward to one reason, and that was because I was almost guaranteed that Beth Phoenix was going to win the Divas Championship, which was going to be like the one thing I was I would say about this match that I thought, you know, she was going to win, and that was probably going to be the highlight of this match was her winning the title. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Kelly Kelly retained the championship. Beth Phoenix was going for the glam slam on Kelly Kelly. Kelly Kelly reversed into a roll-up to retain the Divas Championship, so Kelly Kelly is still the Divas Champion, unfortunately. Thought they would have done something good here with uh, Beth Phoenix becoming the new Divas Champion. Unfortunately, that didn't happen at best. I would give that match probably, you know, one and one, four stars, one star match at best probably. Uh, the next matchup, I really, this was when the show really picked up. This was uh, Wade Barrett versus Daniel Bryan. Really got in this match some good back and forth action, um, good submission work from Daniel Bryan. Wade Barrett looked really good in this match. It's probably one of Wade Barrett's best matches I've seen him in in WWE. Um, great back and forth action, a lot of good reversals, counters. Really enjoyed this match a lot. And uh, Wade Barrett uh, wins the match, um, hitting the Waste Slam, which um, don't know what they're going to do with Daniel Bryan now because he lost the Virtus Del Rio on SmackDown, then he lost on this pay-per-view to Wade Barrett. So hopefully they don't go in a route where he's on a losing streak. Hopefully they don't do that because um, that's something they kind of like doing with you know someone that's either right before they have the money in the bank or maybe when they have the money in the bank briefcase is them kind of going on a losing streak, then out of nowhere they – you know, win the title. Obviously, with Daniel Bryan, he's saying he's going to wait till you know next year's WrestleMania to cash in the Money in the Bank, which would be interesting. Hopefully, you know they they follow through with that and do something good next year at WrestleMania. Hopefully, Daniel Bryan isn't the first person that cashes it in and loses. That's the one thing I'm worried about. But this match with Wade Barrett was really good. Three and one, four stars. Really enjoyed it. This was the match that really started to pick this show up. Then after that, you just had two other matches. The first was the World Heavyweight Championship match, World Heavyweight title match, and a no-holds-barred rules match. This was Christian versus Randy Orton. Um, another great match from these two. Um, started off a little slow, but then really picked up. Um, you saw them use you know, kendo sticks, um, a number of chair shots in this match, um, table spots, just a really good match here. and It, was, it looks like this is the culmination of the feud. Um, actually, one thing I did forget to mention before this match, um, Christian said he had someone there to come out there to stay in his corner. Obviously, we knew who that was going to be, and that was Edge. Edge came out there pretty much saying, you know, what have you turned yourself into, Christian, here? Um, the way you won the title and everything. So they, they did in a way where, you know, he came out there pretty much disgusted the way, you know, Christian's acting right now and disagreeing with that. Then he just went to the back, and he didn't play a role in the rest of the match, which I think was a good thing. It was Cool to see, you know, Edge out there, but it's good that they did, he didn't play a role in this match, especially since this feud with Orton and Christian's been going on for a few months. Uh, it would, it, I, I don't think people would have completely disliked it if he had a role to play in the match, but thankfully they just left it to Orton and Christian. There's a lot of great stuff with these two in this match. Um, pretty much the match ends in, in the way pretty much the feud began, where after um, Christian first won his title, and then on SmackDown a couple months ago, he lost it to Orton, you know, basically the same type of way where Christian was going up, you know, for that springboard, and Orton catches him with the RKO, and he did it this time, catching him with the RKO, 
off, you know, when he did the springboard onto uh, the steel steps in this match. And that's the way Orton wins the championship. So Orton's the new champion. I think they said Orton's now a nine time uh, WWE champion or world heavyweight champion, whichever way you WWE called it. Um, really good match. Really enjoyed it. Three and three, four stars. Um, these two have not had really any bad matches with each other. Um, even last month when they ended in a disqualification, that was like one of the rare, very few rare examples you'd say they had a good match in a disqualification. So Orton and Christian had another good match. Um, so this looks like the culmination of their feud. Unfortunately, what we'll probably have to see next with Randy Orton will be something terrible after all these great matches he had with Christian. Now we're probably going to have to see a terrible World Heavyweight title match or a title feud. Since they're building up Mark Henry, it looks like we'll probably have to see Mark Henry versus Randy Orton, which hopefully they don't have that be a prolonged feud. Hopefully they just take on each other one month. So Because I, I at least get it why it would happen, because they've been building up Mark Henry really strong. He's been going through everyone, so he kind of does have to get that title shot. But hopefully they just do it in one month, and God forbid if he becomes WWE champion, which I don't think we'll have to worry about that happening, because he's been in the company for, what, 15 years and still has never won the World Heavyweight Championship. So I don't think they'll be giving him the championship, but unfortunately we'll probably sit through and see that feud. Uh, then the main event was uh, CM Punk versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. The, this was for the WWE Undisputed Championship. Obviously, CM Punk and John Cena both having the championships. The build-up to this match I thought was great. Um, Triple H, a special guest referee. Um, thankfully, he didn't hurt the match, but there was booking at the end of the match that was a little questionable that kind of did drug the match down a little bit. Because actually, up until the ending of the match, I thought this match was going on to be at least equal to their Money in the Bank match, if not maybe a little better. Um, obviously, the crowd atmosphere, the atmosphere of the crowd was obviously a whole lot better in Chicago. And that was the one thing that match is always going to have over any other CM Punk and John Cena match, but I thought, you know, up until the ending of the match, the in-ring action between John Cena and CM Punk was actually better than their Money in the Bank match. I was really getting into it, really loved it. Um, still a, a really good match for him. I would say a great match for him, and probably either this match or the previous match um, is probably the best the match of the night. I would say CM Punk and John Cena still was my favorite match of the night, even with the, you know, questionable ending and then the random... Um, Kevin Nash appearance, but other than that, it was a good match. These two had good back and forth action, a great match with each other. The way the match ends, CM Punk, he hits uh, two go to sleeps to John Cena, goes for the pin, and Cena puts his foot on the ropes. Triple H didn't see it, so Triple H counts one, two, three. CM Punk is then declared the un undisputed world heavyweight champion. Triple H, and then after that, you know, you were thinking, you know, Stephanie was going to come out there, or Triple H was going to get called to restart the match. That didn't happen. And then Triple H, you know, raising um, CM Punk's hand in victory. So you were expecting Triple H is going to pedigree Punk here. That didn't happen. If that would have happened, I think that would have turned out a whole lot better in, instead of the random thing they did after this, which was um, out of nowhere, you saw um, Kevin Nash come out there and powerbomb CM Punk. CM Punk was laid out. Obviously, we knew what this was signaling, which was Del Rio cashing in the Money in the Bank, which he did, and Del Rio's the undisputed champion right now. So it's going to be interesting to see where they lead to this on Monday Night Raw. Um, the match-wise, even with the stuff you know not getting resolved, the undisputed title issue, I don't think is resolved after this pay-per-view. And you know, CM Punk, you know, the way they ended it, I thought could have been a whole lot better. Um, I would have even dealt with probably post-match Triple H, you know, beating down CM Punk, because then you would at least have build up to, you know, what's probably going to happen, which will probably still happen at some point, which is a Triple H versus CM Punk feud. But just the ending of it, when you know the foot foot on the rope, the issue isn't resolved with the undisputed title, then the very random booking of out of everyone they could have chose, Kevin Nash comes out there and power bombs. Maybe they can do something where Triple H uh, pretty much ordered him to do with that, or Stephanie did that. We'll have to wait and see where this goes on Monday Night Raw since Cena had his foot on the ropes. Cena, Cena's probably going to still claim, you know, he's not still claim he's the champion or he'll, he should get another title shot. So maybe we'll see something next month where we'll see a triple threat since the issue of the title really isn't resolved. Maybe we'll see Alberto Del Rio, John Cena, and CM Punk in a three way. Or maybe they'll just do, um, you know, something else with CM Punk and then just have Del Rio and Punk 
Del Rio and Cena with each other. But C CM Punk's so hot right now, he I think he needs to stay in the title picture. Hopefully we won't have to see a Kevin Nash versus CM Punk for you. But even with the ending right there, I would still give the match three and three, four stars, maybe even four stars. I thought it was a really good match. I got into it. And actually, I thought, you know, up until the ending, in-ring-wise, it was actually better than their previous match. But the ending and the random booking right there kind of hurt it. We obviously knew Del Rio was going to cash it in. So that didn't hurt it at all because um, that was very predictable. That was going to happen. But out of everyone, they chose Kevin Nash. <laughs> is the person they have, you know, pretty much lay out CM Punk. Probably we'll get this all explained on Monday Night Raw, what, where this is leading to. So it, it's definitely had a cliffhanger on, on the pay-per-view where what's going to happen next on Monday Night Raw. So they do tie you in to see what's going to happen next. But for, you know, this show, I, I think they could have had a better ending right there. But still, that match, CM Punk and, and John Cena, really good match with each other. Another great match from them, too. Um, uh, Christian and Randy Orton had another great world title match. It looks like that's probably the culmination of that feud. Wade Barrett and Daniel Bryan for a match that just got had at the last minute. Them two had a really good match. And like I said, the undercard of this pay-per-view was not great at all. The undercard was very lackluster. And then obviously the time they wasted was CeeLo Green out there performing, which they could have done something different. They could have had you know another match there or, like I said, get, gave another match some more time. Uh, I'm not saying none of the matches got enough time, but... They could have at least done something better than wasting that time with CeeLo Green. It's like, just like Kid Rock at WrestleMania was very pointless. Um, obviously, you know, WWE's, you know, thinking using these artists is going to probably give them some media attention, which it probably will. So, second half of the show I thought was great. The first half of it wasn't that good at all, but I think the last three matches really helped the show. Two title matches were great. So, I would, I would give this show probably about a 7.5, maybe even a 7.75. I'm thinking I'm giving a 7... 7.5 out of 10 because I enjoyed the second half of the show. The undercard is really the only thing that hurt it. And then obviously the post-match booking with the CM Punk and John Cena match was a little questionable. You know, Nash getting involved. And then obviously the issue of the Undisputed title is probably not resolved yet, even though Del Rio is now claiming to be the Undisputed champion with, you know, Cena's foot on the rope. So we'll just have to wait and see where this leads on Monday Night Raw. So it was a pay-per-view I would recommend. I definitely would recommend people to check out the last three matches on this pay-per-view. I would I would definitely recommend to skip the first half of the show. I thought it was a pretty good show from WWE. Um, obviously not a spectacular show from them. Um, if they would have really had a better, uh, a really good undercard on this and the whole entire show was booked well, this could have been a great show from WWE because like, like you see... Um, I enjoyed the second half of the show a whole lot. First half of the show is really what drugged down the show, I thought. Um, and then some of the you know booking and the World Title match was a little questionable, I thought. Um, but yeah, that's it for my WWE SummerSlam 2011 pay-per-view review. Bye, right, peace.